In this presentation, we will enter credit card liabilities into our personal accounts within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are on the home page. We currently have the open windows open. We can open the open windows by going to the view drop down and selecting the open windows list. We're not going to go to our reports up top by going to the company or the reports drop down, going to company and financial and taking a look at the balance sheet standard. Let's start off with the standard balance sheet. Then we're going to change the dates up top in the customized reports. We're going to change the dates from 010120 to 1231-20. That's January 1st to December 31st, the year we're working on, 2020. We're then going to change the fonts and numbers tab. Change the font size to 11. OK. Yes and OK. So we're concentrating here on the credit card. And if we scroll down to the balance sheet, we have our liabilities. We have recorded them properly here in that we have the liability amount and that ties out to our current liability. If we double click on this, we can see that our current system is tracking the liabilities well in that, for example, we have after the first payment, the 285 that's left as the liability. And if we look at our February statement, then the beginning balance is that 285. And then we'll track that out. We have the ending balance of 710 and then we paid 150. So on that, so if we had the 710 minus the 150, our ending balance is 560. And that's what we have here on the 560. So our current system is tracking this out. However, we did take a bit of a shortcut in that we, our current system is entering everything into the check register. And we mentioned that there are some drawbacks to that system. Let's go into the detail of these checks and discuss the drawbacks to this system. So if we just double click on this check, we're going to say, how did we enter this? We entered it directly into the check register, but it'll be the same kind of layout that we have here. Meaning we said that uh, we're going to write the check. We saw the check that cleared our bank statement and we entered this from the bank statement and said that we had $100 that we paid on this. Then instead of doing the most simple thing we could have done, which is to make an expense account, just recording like credit card expense, we gave the detail for it, which means that we had to then get the credit card statement in order to enter this detail. So there's three kind of methods we could use. The most simple method is just to make whatever payment we do on the credit card and record the other side as something like credit card expense. But of course you get no detail in terms of the account categories that should be assigned in that method. The second method is what we've done prior to this, which is we've we got the credit card statement for in this case january and we enter this data into our credit card statement but just into the check register and so we paid a hundred dollars and we had these charges that we charged out we paid the hundred dollars and then we charged out these charges and recorded the other side to the 285 credit card account this method works well except and it, and it does what we need to do but the drawbacks are that it doesn't record this as of the proper dates that the transactions happened on an accrual basis it doesn't record these as the date they happen they record these at the date we wrote the check so that's going to be one problem that we have the other problem is that these um, vendors aren't going to be able to we can't track and run a report by vendor because we didn't put them in the vendor section, which was, was the credit card that we paid, we put them in a memo. So if we wanted to run a report by how, how much did we pay Ralph's, then we couldn't really, these amounts wouldn't be included in it because they're, they're in the memo section. So now we'll do kind of the full service credit card and talk about, well, how can we do this more properly so that we can have the correct dates for each transaction and have the uh, vendors recorded. And the way to do that, it's kind of a two-step process. So we're going we're gonna to go to the credit card register. We're going to kind of pretend we haven't paid this yet. And then we'll come back here and adjust this check. So what we should do then, if, we, if we're running through the bank statement and we see, okay, we paid $100 for the credit card. Then we pulled out the trustee credit card statement and saw the detail of it. Then what we're going to do is not enter directly into the register, but go to the credit card um, register. So to do that, I'm going to close this back out. 
we're going to go to the banking up top. We'll go to use register. And I'm going to select the drop down and we want to go down to our credit card. So if we go down into our liabilities, we'll have a liability type account for the credit card. We only have one credit card here, so it's nice and easy for us to know which one. If you have more than one, you want to differentiate by number or by company. And then we'll say OK. And you'll see that we have these two payments already because these are showing the payments, but they're not showing the detail. They're not showing any of the activity. So we're going to get back to these payments. We're going to enter the detail now into this system. So kind of ignore these payments as if they aren't there right now. And they'll, hopefully this will come to light after we finish this out. So we're going to go back through here and we're going to enter our detail for January into the system directly into the credit card register now. So we had Ralph's, Chevron, and Starbucks. We're going to enter those into this credit card as if they're three, they're three different transactions. So, and remember, this is not the bank statement. This is the credit card statement. So it's register, the credit card register. So we're going to say this is on 01-16-20. That's January 16, 2020. And then we can say this is going to go to Ralph's. And we can actually type in the vendor, Ralph's Grocery Store. We'll just call it Ralph's. That's our vendor. This is what we were missing under the other statement. We, didn't, we couldn't type in the vendor. So we'll say tab, quick add. It's going to be a vendor, grocery store. And we paid 310 to Ralph's. Now we can assign the other side, which is groceries. We're going to put into groceries expense and enter. Now we have the groceries expense up top. We're going to increase these until we make the payment. So this will make more sense. We'll do this on the second month. This might actually make more sense as we do the second month as well. So we'll do this for both months. So then we'll go to the next one, which is Chevron. That happened on 127. And so this is going to be 127. And we're going to say this is Chevron, which again, we can now add the vendor and the correct date of the payment. Chevron, quick add, vendor. And it's going to be for $60. And we'll put this to gas. Or we put it to auto and then gas, auto, and then gas. So that's going to be that item. So we'll enter in this in. No cash affected on these transactions. Credit card going up, other side expense account. Then we'll, we'll go back over here again, and the last one's to Starbucks. So we'll add Starbucks, and that happened on the 29th. So the 29th is going to be Starbucks, tab, quick add, vendor, $15 and this is going to be I think we just put coffee <laughs> coffee shops expense and that's our transactions so now we have Ralph's Chevron and Starbucks date of the transaction proper we actually have the vendors in there so that if we went to the vendor center and wanted to run a report on how much we're paying say to Starbucks then we can go down here and we can run a transaction report we could say okay give me the report for Starbucks as of 010120 to 123120, and we'll see the transaction there. We wouldn't be able to do that. You notice we can't see the other one when we enter directly into the register because we didn't use the vendor. So that's going to be the benefit. Now, what we need to do then is modify the payment we made. And note again, we made this payment in the middle of the month. And really, obviously, we would be, if we're tying this payment out to this uh, activity, we should have put the activity in in December, the the charges that we paid in January. So just you know be aware that of that kind of of the date issue on on there. It's a little bit skewed. We're paying the January off in the middle of the month. We would probably be paying January January off in February. So but so just be aware of that. Hope that doesn't confuse too much. What we're gonna do is go back now to our uh, detailed report, our transaction detail. And we now have this detail. Well, let's close this back out. Go back to the balance sheet. It's probably the easiest place to go back. So here's our credit card. If we double click on the credit card from the balance sheet now, we'll go back into our detail. And then within the detail, here's the original check we were looking at. Now we have this added information. We're now going to adjust the original check. So I'm going to close this back out. And instead of entering, so we still have the 100 that came out of the checking account. 
but instead of entering this detail we've already entered that into the into the check register for the credit card so I'm going to delete this this isn't what we want here what we're going to do instead is simply record the other side to credit card and make sure to pick up the credit card liability so we want the credit card liability it we should we only have an expense here because that was our simple method to record an expense this is the liability account we're decreasing so if we say that then should be the hundred dollars so a hundred dollars hundred dollars and then save and close so let's recap this and then we'll do it again see if it makes more sense on the second time so we're gonna what we're saying here if we go to the balance sheet and if we go to the detailed report now we have the same information but now the details broken out so we've got Ralph's Chevron and Starbucks is the activity and then the hundred dollar payment within the balance sheet detail report so let's do this again for the second payment and let's try to reverse it. let's try to do it a little bit different order I'm gonna double click on this and here's how we entered it directly into the register what we want to do is enter this into the credit card statement first and then make the payment that will go to the credit card so instead of entering all this data this is kind of what we would do the second time or we can do it beforehand and and then enter the information into the credit card statement but the point is this detail won't be here I'm gonna delete the detail we're just gonna delete all this and on the check register when we enter it into the check register all we're going to enter is the 150 we paid the other side going to credit card but they're li make sure it's the liability account and that's going to be the 150 that's all we need to enter in the check register we'll save and close and say yes and so now if we look at our liability we've got this 150 there we don't have the detail yet and the detail is related to the February statement so here's February same activity that happened here's our beginning balance here's the detail here's what happened in February now we're going to go to the credit card register and enter the detail so we already have the payment that was made we're going to go to the register to enter the detail remember this is the credit card register and not the check register if we go into the credit card now we're going to enter the the Ralph's grocery store this should be February 16th when the February statement so we're going to go in here and say this is 021620 and this was Ralph's and 350 and notice groceries is already selected for us because we had paid that in the prior time period so that's nice we're going to say okay and there is that next transaction is going to be the Chevron gas for February same thing on the 27th so we're going to say this happened on the 27th and type in Chevron that's going to be for 55 the gas is already there for us because we had done this in the prior period or we already entered this in the prior month and or similar activity to it the same vendor in other words and now we're going to go here again one more to Starbucks so this is on the 29th and we're going to say Starbucks $20 that's the coffee shop already in the vendors as well and enter so there's our activity we're at 561 and that would make sense now because we're saying that we had 710 on this statement 710 minus what we paid and what we paid was the 150 minus 150 gives us the 560 it's a penny off because of rounding or a dollar off 561 so that's going to be the detail of our information you can see here that if we go to our register then this is these are the payments that are being made and we can enter them here or just directly into the check register as we had before but instead of entering the detail in the check register we just enter the other side of it going here to the credit card statement so in other words if we go to the check register now reports uh, banking use register and the checking account and if we go to the check register on January 15th 
was our first payment for $100. That's not it. The credit card. There it is. Notice all we have then is $100, the other side going to our credit card. That, and that's our liability account. No detail. And then we could go to our credit card, register, and see the other side. Here it is here, and here it is going to our checking account on the other side. And then here's our detail on the information. These increase in the liability, credit card, what we owe, and the expenses, what we paid for. And then here's our second credit card payment that we got from our checking account. So if we go to our checking account, February, we made a payment to the credit card of, I believe it was 150 on the 15th. So here it is. And we made the 150, didn't put the detail of the statement, but just put it to credit card, not expense, credit card, the liability. And then if we go to the credit card liability, we'll see the other side. We'll see the payment. And then we'll see the detail of the things that we spent money on. So again, the only thing that's kind of tricky here that should could be throwing people off a bit, note that these payments uh, are happening in January. We probably wouldn't paid for them till February. So as these payments happen, if we paid $100 for those payments, it would happen in February. And if we had these payments happening in February, the 150 we paid for them would have been a payment for the next month. So just be aware of that. But in any case, what's going to happen in the two-step step system is we enter our, our liabilities directly into the credit card register rather than the check register, increasing the liability and the expenses. Then we can just simply go to our bank statement and record the information into the bank statement, decreasing the bank statement, recording the other side to the credit card liability, which will write down the liability. And as we do this, if we want to check that we're doing things correctly, then we have to go back to this, this liability statement, this liability balance, and just make sure that the balance is tying out to what it should in accordance to what we owe on the credit card statement. We can do that here, or we can do that on the balance sheet. Now, this, of course, takes two steps. We have to work in two different registers in order to do this, so it's a little bit more time-consuming. Remember the benefits, the pros, and the cons. The benefit is... Under either method that we used, uh, the prior method or this method, we had the, the liability balance correct. But we um, under, under this method, we get to follow the vendors a little bit more closely, and we get the dates of the payments made according to when the actual payment was made, when the credit card payment was processed as opposed to when we wrote the check. So that's the more detail we get from doing this added step within QuickBooks. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.